Hello, welcome to Sight. Today we will talk about cognitive psychology. As a matter of fact, even now your brain makes lots of and lots of cognitive processes. For example, to read a text on the video, you use pattern recognition. And to understand what you read, you use memory retrieval. And also decision making, whether to continue watching this video or switching to another one. We hope you are still watching. Actually, human mind is not only being investigated by cognitive psychology, but it is under a broader umbrella which we call cognitive sciences. These cognitive sciences are, but not limited to, computer sciences, biology, artificial intelligence, linguistics, neuroscience and cognitive anthropology. So the processes such as perception, memory, learning, attention, language use, metacognition, decision making and so forth, these kinds of processes are cumulatively called as a cognition. And cognitive psychology is the branch of psychology which is investigating these processes. If you want to become a cognitive psychologist, you should first do preferably a bachelor's degree in psychology and then a master's and a PhD in cognitive psychology. And then most probably you can either work in universities or research institutions conducting research or teaching or in artificial intelligence or machine learning companies. Now, cognitive psychology is a branch on its own, but it's also the name of a general perspective which is also affecting other subfields. Let's talk about three of these. Firstly, in clinical psychology we can talk about cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the best evidence-based treatment method for disorders now. For example, in depression, a new treatment method developed by Beck based on cognitive psychology was really beneficial. So it's basically based on this idea, if we interpret the events uh, on a biased way in the cognitive level, it can change the emotional results. So if we can change the cognition, change the biased interpretation way, we can treat these disorders. Secondly, let's talk about social psychology. And there's a branch within the social psychology called social cognition, which is investigating how people perceive each other in a cognitive level in social context. For example, if we show you this picture and uh, ask you which different face do you notice, According to research, the first face to be noticed is angry faces, among others. So, social cognition is asking this question, why? And lastly, we can talk about a theory of mind from developmental psychology branch, which is basically saying that around the age of 4 to 5, children kind of developing a theory of mind about how the other's mind work. For example, they show this cartoon to children and reads as this, Sally puts her ball in the basket and Sally goes away. In the meantime, when Sally away, Anna moves the ball to her box, okay? And now, when Sally come back, the question is where will Sally look for the ball? If the child has a theory of mind develop, he or she will tell that the Sally will look in the basket. If not, the Sally will look in the box. In this video, we talked about what is cognitive psychology, and what are the cognitive sciences, how to become a cognitive psychologist, and we talked three examples from clinical, social and developmental psychology.